Hi guys, welcome to another edition of On The Table, your TV show about tabletop gaming. This week we've got another bumper show packed to the rafters with new goodies to show you. And in between shows, if you want even more information, remember to visit the Beast of War website, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or maybe even subscribe to us on YouTube. Anyway, let's get on with the show and see what we've got. If you play Smog 13th Hour, or you're a collector and painter of fine miniatures, then you'll know it's always an exciting day when Smart Max release a new model. This is Signor Geppetto, the latest model to be added to the game. The character of Signor Geppetto is based on the Italian toy maker from the Pinocchio stories. However, in the 13th Hour game, the toy maker has been given a sinister twist and an army of clockwork horrors to do his bidding. Of course, Geppetto wouldn't be complete without his Pinocchio, and you can see this Pinocchio is far from a real boy. If you're into Eastern fantasy style games, then check out this release from Bushido. Here's the concept art for a new duo called The Spirit and the Orphan. Here's how the actual miniature turned out, and I think it's safe to say that it's really close to the concept art and therefore really good. With that in mind, we're really excited to see how this guy turns out based on his concept art. While we're in a Japanese frame of mind, Anima Tactics is a game based around the fantastic imagery of Japanese anime, and these new models are additions to the Black Sun faction, a fantasy mega corporation who specialize in the reclaiming of magical artifacts and the creation of powerful weapons for sorcerers. The game has many characters of opposing alignments battling for the honor of their faction while also following their own agenda. Look out for more coverage on Anima Tactics on Beasts of War soon. Dystopian Wars is a war game set in a reimagined Victorian world where science fiction collides with steam power to produce flying battleships and huge mechanical war machines fighting for control of Earth. These latest Corvette ships may not be the biggest hitters in your armada, but they provide a tactical advantage and can easily engulf larger vessels when acting as a group. What else can you expect to see in a game of Dystopian Wars? Well, take a look at these models and check out those massive mechanical machines that you could have sitting on your table. Dark Sword miniatures are their creators of some of the most sensational fantasy miniatures around, and in many ways their style is more traditional than some of the more outlandish models we often review, but nonetheless, these sculpts are executed with a simple grace that makes them a joy to paint, and they're suitable for any 28mm fantasy wargame you care to name. Many of the models are based on the art of popular fantasy artists such as Larry Elmore, but they've also created a range of miniatures for a Game of Thrones, based on the works of George R.R. R. Martin. So if you need a Lannister or a Stark, then you know where to go. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, then you may be interested to know there's actually a board game based on your favourite series. It's a mixture of conquest and intrigue and has been created by Fantasy Flight Games and has many hours of gameplay for two to six players. In fact, why not take a look at it now? As always, that's very cool looking stuff from Fantasy Flight Games, but just out of the corner of my eye, I've spotted Romeo from Battle Foam walk in. Yes, the Maestro of Foam is here with us this week as our special guest, and to surprise him, I think we'll make him do the rest of the show. But beware guys, let's hope he doesn't try and sell us all a bag while he's doing it. It's been about a month since Games Workshop launched their new Ogre Kingdoms army book, but since then, we've actually seen a couple of third-party products, some pretty cool Ogre models come out. As you can see, Ogre Pirates from Titan Forge are awesome. We expect to see one or maybe two models, but this is an entire pirate crew. These guys would be perfect proxies for an Ogre army or even as a great encounter for your favorite fantasy RPG. Really neat stuff. 
And here's a couple of other Ogre models, this time from Cyborg Monstrous Miniatures. Really neat. All these guys are casting their models in resin. It's a bit easier to convert than metal, but a bit more fragile as it tends to snap when dropped rather than bending or bouncing back like plastic. Hmm, sounds like you need some kind of carrying case. One that would protect your models with, um, I don't know, Sensational armies need bases and nothing is better than a well-painted and sculpted base. Check out some of these examples from Micro Art Studio. They've got all sorts of bases to mount flying monsters, heroic champions, and even stalwart foot soldiers. If you want something to set off your already fantastically painted army, then maybe it's a sculpted base you've been missing. As you know, everything is better in space. It seems even mice. These mouseling models from Reaper Miniatures make a fantastically cute diorama, or you could easily use them in your favorite space game as, well, as space mice, I suppose. Well, those are pretty cool, but why not check out some of the other releases from Reaper this month? Reaper have a vast catalog of over 2,500 miniatures, each individual and each ready to make your favorite fantasy force that bit more impressive. Of course, you could easily fit over 250 fantastic 28 millimeter Reaper miniatures into a bag maybe from back. If you're not much of a painter, but you still want some super cool bases, then why don't you check out these clear resin base inserts from Dark Age? These transparent discs glue into the recess at the top of your 30 millimeter lipped base and allow you to attach your models directly to it, giving that odd worldly feel of either a sinister swamp or perhaps some radioactive slime pool. Well, Halloween may be over, but we couldn't go without showing something sinister for the season. Spellco created that really cool model for Halloween and you can always go check it out again. As you can see, we thought it was an awesome model. Spellcrow are a Polish company that have an interesting fantasy range in the style reminiscent of the now defunct Rackham models. Now don't forget, the Rackham range is on its way back as the models are being remastered in resin by Legacy Miniatures, so stay tuned for more information on them over the next months. If you're easily offended by Toy Soldiers No Pants on, avert your eyes. Okay, it's not bad, but these guys are Celts, and their most feared warriors not only had a serious hatred of the enemy, but they also seem to have an aversion to clothes too. Warlord Games has launched its range of Celtic Linebreakers, a fearsome unit of elite warriors for use in their Hail Caesar game of ancient battles. Check out some of the rest of the range and see if it's the sort of thing that would interest you. Of course, with all those exposed bits hanging out, it would be easy to get those models damaged. And why would you want that? When you can protect it in some brand new green bat. <laughs> the latest War Machine plastic resin kit to become available is the new Mercenary Warjack kit, set to earn the Mercenary faction some gold and glory on the battlefield. There are also some extra releases this month. And don't forget, Horde's Domination is on its way and there will be some video reviews up as soon as possible. In this, the season of supernatural horror, we would be remiss if we didn't offer a reference to the master of horror himself, H.P. Lovecraft. These deep one and dark young models are straight from the pages of one of the Lovecraft's seminal works. But how did he manage to fathom those sculpts? Lovecraft himself only described these things as horrors of tentacles, shadows, and cycloptic madness. Perhaps Black Ball Games know something we don't, or something we never meant to know. Cool distress post-apocalyptic vehicles are all the rage, and none more so than this beat up battle buggy from Puppets War. These guys are another Polish company who specializes in conversion parts for your favorite range of miniatures. 
This model could easily fit into any gothic sci-fi game, or indeed a near future game, where everyone has gone a bit Mad Max. If you've been following Mantic's release of the Warpath game, you'll know that we all expected there to be a plastic set of their Forge Father's Warriors, and here it is. The official launch of the Warpath starter game is on the 12th of November, and if you're in or around Nottingham on that date, Mantic Games will be holding their open day, where you can get to see some games of Warpath played, as well as pose your own questions directly to Ronnie Renton, the head of Mantic, and Alessio Cavatore, the creator of the game rules and Warpath universe. Infinity are at it again with another stunning set of releases. Check these out. For Ariadna players, nothing is cooler than this new tractor mule. Awesome stuff. This remote controlled mini tank is capable of decimating the battlefield with its twin missile launchers. So you can be sure to see more of the Ariadna and in particular the French Metropolitan Sectorial Force in the local Infinity tournaments near you soon. For those of you who have not checked out the Beast of War website, you may not know that you can find some crazy hints and tips about how to play your favorite tabletop games. Daryl, the resident master of the underhanded strategy, is ready to teach you some of the tricks and tactics he's learned from the tournament gaming scene, and maybe a few cheesy bits he made up himself, just to get everyone annoyed. Beast of War covers as many games as possible, but there's always room for more. So why not drop them an email at ask at beastsofwar.com and see if they can add your favorite game to the mix. One trick Daryl hasn't showed yet, but really should, is how to actually get and transport your miniature collection in some battle. <laughs> Fantasy football, the sport of the discerning gamer or at least a tabletop gamer looking for a fun game. Check out this circus-themed goblin team for your favorite fantasy football game. Some of the models may have some kit that could do with some homebrew rule or two, but hey, that's the fun of gaming. Of course, some of those models are also quite unique. You wouldn't be able to get those into just any standard foam. No, sir, you need battle. What's this? Battlefoam have released an Infinity Bag and it's available in stores now? Well, I for one am shocked. However, I've heard that the Infinity Alpha Bag comes with a limited edition Yon Yon Mercenary Miniature that can be used to devastate your enemies in a game. Even that new tractor model can't stand the wrath of the miniature that comes free. That's right, free. As you know, Battlefoam specializes in top of the line carrying cases for your miniatures. And of course, the only company doing custom cut foam just for your individual armies. Stay tuned to Beasts of War, who will be hosting a very special Battle Foam Week real soon. With fun challenges, prizes, and cool interviews with some guy that I think runs the company or something. I have no idea who that is, but I'll need to get some approval. I'll be definitely watching, so you stay tuned also. Well, that's it. That's the end of the show. Thanks very much, Romeo. You did a great job, even if you did try and sell us a bag over and over and over again. Anyway, guys, join us again in two weeks' time when we'll be taking another look at the world of tabletop gaming. And if you can't wait, in the meantime, you can check us out on beastofwar.com, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to us on YouTube.